Hi everybody out there on internet and YouTube Wonderland. This is Marty Rocket again, doing something a little bit different this week. Now everybody knows that on a Thursday, uh, Rocket Hideout is always updated with an article written by yours truly. Um, however, this week I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I thought of a bunch of things I could do, stuff like anime, stuff like wrestling, 80s cartoons, video games even, but I thought a good one to start with might be something that's a big passion of mine um, and my favourite movie of all time and if you know me we can only be talking about Transformers the movie and we're not talking about the Michael Bay movies even though I really do enjoy those um, even though most people don't we're talking about the original 1980s animated movie Transformers the movie came out in the 80s um, I can remember watching Transformers the movie when I was about four or five years old, somewhere around there, so that would put put the year at about 1989 to 1990, something like that. And I can actually recall quite well viewing the movie for the first time. From my first viewing of it, it became my favourite movie ever. So this is a plot for those who um, have never seen Transformers a movie before. Basically, Transformers a movie takes place after the second season of the original um, G1 Transformers cartoon. The story is it's been about 15 to 20 years since um, the events of the last episode of the 1980s season 2 Transformers cartoon. Um, and as you find out through a bit of narration at the beginning of the movie, the Decepticons have seemingly won the war and gained control of Cybertron. So while the Autobots are down, they're, they're not out. Um, Cybertron, their home planet, has two moons orbiting it. And unbeknownst to the Decepticons, I guess, at first the Autobots um, set themselves up on two of the moons. And they also set themselves up on Earth. They make a little city for themselves that they call Autobot City. Not a very, imagin not a very imaginative uh, name, if you ask me. So the movie follows um, a series of events. The first event is that the Decepticons get wind of what the Autobots are doing. They're planning a big sort of rebel strike, I guess, kind of like in Star Wars. Um, and Megatron's not having it, so he's going to go along with the Decepticons and fuck that shit up. I am no man! I am the So basically, Megatron takes the Decepticons down to Autobot City, and um, a big fight ensues between the two sides, um, with both sides getting, I guess, injured and suffering casualties very badly. Megatron, being one of the most heavily wounded, gets kicked out into outer space by Starscream, his treacherous lieutenant. Um, seemingly dying in space, a Megatron's found by Unicron, a huge planet-eating world who's come along in this movie to destroy the mystical Autobot Matrix of Leadership. The pair enter into a deal, um, the dying Megatron will be revived uh, in a new form by Unicron as long as Megatron promises to destroy the Autobot Matrix of Leadership form. Because, as, Mega as Unicron says, it's the only thing that can destroy him. Excellent. So Megatron gets changed into Galvatron, and from there the Autobots have to ensure that this new menace called Unicron and his new controlled Decepticons don't get the Matrix and somehow figure out a way to destroy this new most deadly foe. Behold, Galvatron. So that's pretty much the plot of Transformers the movie in a nutshell, since I don't want to give too much away. Um, you may have noticed that I said earlier that, you know, there's heavy losses and big big casualties on both sides. Um, that's basically Hasbro, the company that makes Transformers. That was their way of bringing out a bunch of new toys. Basically, this movie in a lot of ways is a glorified toy commercial and Hasbro thought it would be a great way to bring a bunch of new Transformers to to the masses basically. Um, you know they kill off a bunch of the old 1984 and 1985 Transformers and bring in these new super cool um, 1986 characters who are like a million times better than the originals. So while killing off all the 1984 and 1985 
uh, characters may have seemed like a good idea at the time, replacing them with these new futuristic, super cool 1986 characters. There was a lot of negative backlash that came with that. Um, obviously, I mean, there was a third season after the movie that followed the exploits of what happened after the movie. Unfortunately, um, when the series came out, Hasbro and the company that made the cartoon Sumbo found that the, um, the ratings were going down quite heavily. Um, less of the new toys were actually being sold as well because um, children, I guess, at the time really didn't take kindly to the fact that Optimus Prime was killed off quite early in the movie. There were also plans, um, because at the time Hasbro was basically making as many movies on their franchises as they could. So you had a movie coming out for My Little Pony, I believe. Um, there was a movie coming out for G.I. Joe as well. And at the time there were plans to kill off, I think, Duke in G.I. Joe the movie. But basically once Hasbro got wind of how negatively people and children reacted when Optimus Prime was killed off, they decided to axe that. They said, forget it, we can't do that, we'll have to do something else. The movie was actually criticised as being a great big Star Wars ripper. You know, from the use of like lightsaber-like weapons, you see Megatron use one, you see Hot Rod use one in the movie as well. Um, people said that Unicron resembled the Death Star, which was a pretty big ripoff. And um, probably most important of all, Hot Rod's character um, resembling Luke Skywalker from the Star Wars movies. I guess those are all valid points of criticism, but in fairness, I mean, Transformers is basically sci-fi and, you know, laser swords, that's nothing new in science fiction, I'm sure, before Transformers the movie, and maybe maybe even before Star Wars, such kind of, you know, such weapons were written about in, you know, in books and stuff. Hot Rod's coming of age character as well. That's nothing new, really. I mean, I can't, I can't see Luke Skywalker being the first and only character having a coming of age sort of story where he co turns from this young boy and seemingly grows up in the span of one movie or a few movies. I don't think that's uh, that's a fair point. It's your basic cliched sci-fi movie at the end of the day. So those were a lot of the criticisms about Transformers the movie. So I suppose you want to know some some of my thoughts and feelings on the movie. A Transformers the movie for me, um, especially when I was four or five years old, it see it was such it such a blow away experience for me. It literally knocked me back. I was like, whoa, what's going on here? You know, Transformers the movie seemed to up the ante for the Transformers universe and treated the Transformers war for once like a real war. You know, the two sides took it to each other in the big battle scene for Autobot City that happens in the first 20 minutes. And it looks like, to me, a real war movie, like something like footage from World War II in a documentary style with a sci-fi twist. That's, that's how it looked. There's a scene where um, Deceptors, like in, a, like in a trench or behind some rubble, shooting at the Decepticons and a shot from the Decepticons misses him and then he runs forward with another Autobot to try and take um, a position of a bit further on in the battleground. Um, so it really looked like a proper war game. It's a great contrast to the first two seasons of the Transformers cartoon show, which more or less give or take a couple of the more sort of climactic episodes. Most episodes could be filed under Megatron's evil scheme or Megatron's weapon of the week. There were no ever no serious repercussions for both sides. That's pretty big. It shows a level of mortality in Transformers that you don't usually get. It makes the Transformers seem a lot more human. I guess a good way to show the high stakes in this movie is um, by talking about the character's dialogue a little bit. Um, the dialogue in this movie isn't completely squeaky clean from beginning to end. There are a few points where there's some light cursing involved, where some of the characters say words such as damn, which um, now might not seem a big deal, but back then saying damn on a cartoon show was pretty strong. Not to mention where Spike screams his infamous line. Oh shit, what are we gonna do now? It's definitely a darker spin on the Transformers, especially with the threat of Unicron's inevitable rival towards the end. You just get a complete sense that this is the ultimate Transformers adventure, this is the one you've got to see.
You know, and with the movie being such a big deal and a landmark in the Transformers universe, obviously the third season continues that. I mean, you wouldn't want this big movie to happen with all these big events happening and then the third season just carries on like it's no big deal. The Transformers enter an entirely new chapter in their lives. You know, they have, um, they have new leaders, obviously, um, and it shows that the Transformers have sort of like a new sort of battle, you know, it's no longer about control of Cybertron or control of Earth, it's about the universe itself, it's the ultimate battle now between the forces of good and evil. The Transformers origins are also covered, um, there's deeper exploration into the Autobot Matrix, its significance to the Transformers universe and what it does. There's also greater detail as to why the Quintessons who are in the movie go from being just a hostile plot point where Hot Rod and Cup are captured by them and they become a focal point in the Transformers universe from then on. Innocent. Feed him to the Sharktacons. Probably the most important factor of the third season covers Rodimus' Prime's struggle of carrying the responsibility of leadership. That's probably my favourite thing about the third season, and one of my favourite things about Transformers in general. Rodimus Prime at the beginning of the movie, he's hot rod, so he's like this teenage sort of robot who doesn't really have many cares in the world. You know, he's shown with Spike's son fishing at a lake just you know passing the time maybe even wasting his time like a teenager would watching the day go by by the end of the movie in the beginning of the third season he's having to step up and be the leader and try and fill optimus prime shoes and considering how much of like the perfect leader and perfect character optimus prime was those are a big pair of shoes to fill a real big pair and rodimus struggles with that all the way through the third season which is probably the overarching sort of plot to the third season that this character now has to struggle with following in the shoes of his predecessor and that is probably one of the best things that happens out of this movie. So while this movie has been heavily criticised in the past because it is something over 20 years old for being nothing more than a glorified toy commercial or even a movie with no real substance, I've personally never seen it that way. For me, this movie is the highlight of the entire Transformers universe. It's like a bookmark, if you like. Um, if you to, uh, to open up a book um, and you looked at all the chapters, this would probably be the big chapter in the middle, um, highlighted Transformers a movie, because it takes the Transformers series and takes it in a completely different direction from then on. Um, it gives the story a much darker twist. It changes how Transformers goes. The first two seasons were basically Megatron's evil scheme or weapon of the week. Optimus Prime defeats him and that's that. This takes Transformers into a bolder different direction. It gave the Transformers universe more of a sense of drama that it might not have necessarily had before like I mentioned with Rodimus Prime trying to fill Optimus Prime's shoes and always haunted by the fact that he might not be as good as Optimus Prime in a leadership capacity. It also covers Galvatron's slip into absolute madness and the Decepticons basically just being led by this complete nut and nutcase. It just it gives the whole universe, like I said before, a sense of drama and that these aren't just these sort of robots who can't be hurt like I said earlier. It makes these characters a bit more mortal, a bit more human and a bit more relatable. You combine all that with the fact that this is just 86 minutes of non-stop transforming robot violence with a killer soundtrack and a star-studded cast. For example, Judd Nelson, who was big in the 80s, Robert Stack of Unsolved Mysteries, and you don't even have to mention Orson Welles, everybody knows who he is. With all that in mind, Transformers the movie is and will always be my favourite movie and by default it will always be the Rocket Hideout's favourite movie. If you're a person who has a passing interest in Transformers, maybe you were growing up in the 80s and you remember that toy that transformed from a robot into a cassette player, or if you're a huge Transformers nut like me then you need, really need to see Transformers the movie. 
If you've never seen it, you can pick it up pretty cheap these days since the movie's been re-released time and again. So do yourself a favor, get down to wherever DVDs are sold, buy the movie, pick it up, watch it. Hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as me um, and you'll probably definitely find it a great alternative to the Michael Bay movies. More than you imagine.